Greetings, my photo buddies, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Now, today I'm going to be walking you through a basic workflow develop process here in Lightroom. Now, this is a photo that I took at Lake Tekapo, which is on the South Island of New Zealand. This beautiful stormy day with these dramatic clouds flying overhead and the huge howling wind pushing these massive waves across the lake. However, this is not what the photo looked like when it came out of my camera. No, in fact, it was looking more like this, very flat, very washed out. And it was only through the raw processing here in Lightroom that I brought out all the details and gave it this nice juicy punch. So let's take a look at exactly how I did that. First thing, let's jump into the develop module by hitting D, as in develop dummy. Cool. Now here we are. There's a couple of things. Let's go ahead and minimize that so we can get a better view of the photo that I like to do before I even start my actual processing. And one of them is I always minimize, I minimize all of these panels so they're easy to get to, so I'm not scrolling up and down like a maniac. Then I always double check a couple of settings. One of them is that my camera calibration is set to either flat or neutral. And the reason I like doing that is because it gives you a very basic starting point so that you can choose how much contrast, saturation, detail to put into the photo instead of having Lightroom choose that or instead of having the camera choose that. So, booyah, we're on flat. The other thing I like to check is to make sure my remove chromatic aberration box is ticked here in the lens correction panels. And now we're ready to edit. So because this photo is kind of washed out looking, the first thing I'm gonna do is jump down to my effects panel and add a little bit of dehazing. Now, I don't wanna do a, a crazy amount because I know I'm gonna add contrast later, but dehazing it a little bit will start to bring out some of the details and give me a better idea of where to take my edit from here. And now that I've done that, the photo is actually looking a little bit too blue to me. So I'm going to jump up into my basic tab and warm it up a little bit just to try to get a better balance between the cool tones and the warm tones here in the image. Now, I know for a fact that the number one thing this image needs is a massive dose of contrast. However, I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to do it in the tone curve because it gives you more control. But the thing that I'm a little bit worried about is that if I add contrast to this photo, you can see that my whites and my highlights are much closer to white than my shadows and my darks are closer to black. And so if I just add contrast, I'm more likely to start blowing out my whites and highlights. So the, I'm going to actually drop down the highlights here to try to give myself a little more breathing room at the top of the tonal range. And the other thing I want to do before I jump into putting any contrast in the photo is I always make an adjustment down here in presence. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity, which helps local contrast to bring out details. And then I'm going to add a little bit of vibration, which is a combination of vibrance and saturation. I don't do a lot. I usually just crank these up to about 10 or so each, because when I add contrast, that's also going to add saturation to the image. All right, now we're ready to make our contrast adjustment, which like I said, I'm going to do via the tone curve because it allows me to target the exact tonal regions that I want. Now in this case, because I got a very well-behaved histogram, it's going to be a real easy adjustment. I'm just going to drag my highlights up a fair bit, and then I'm going to drag my darker tones down a fair bit in this classic S-curve. And that's just going to give my photo a lot of punch and a lot more power than it had before. And you can see we've done a really good job now of spanning the whole tonal range from near black to near white. So we've got a great amount of global contrast now in the image. However, having done that, I can see that there are a couple of changes I still need to make. So I really love the light hitting the mountain here. But what I think distracts the viewer's eye from that spot is the brightness of these clouds up here. So I want to darken those a little bit to allow this area to draw more attention. So I'm just going to grab a graduated filter here. And I'm going to dial in a small exposure decrease and a small contrast increase. And then I'm going to target these areas up here, but I don't want to target that mountain. So I'm going to do it at kind of an angle like this. And that's going to help darken that sky while leaving that mountain mostly alone. 
So that's pretty good. Let's, I think I want to try to bring out some of the details in these dramatic clouds here. So I'll add a little bit of clarity to bring out those tonal contrasts. That looks really good. Now, I find that these clouds up here are still a little too bright for my tastes. So I'm going to add actually another graduated filter. Let's hit new. There we go. That's the button I meant to push. And I'm not going to go as quite as strong of an exposure decrease, but still another exposure decrease just to hit those clouds at the very top of the frame. That's looking pretty good. Maybe we'll add a little clarity and a little saturation to bring out some of those purple tones to form a nice complement to the green tones down here. Okay. Yes, I think that is much, much better. Let's turn those on and off to see what kind of difference big difference. Really helps keep the eye in the frame to draw attention to this mountain. However, now that I've added all this contrast, you can see that I've actually got tons of spots all over the photo. Now, I was shooting at f22 to try to get the entire scene in focus, so that's why I've got all those spots. Those are really, really easy to get rid of in Lightroom. Just grab your spot removal brush here. If you hit and hold the space bar, it'll bring up your magnifying glass so you can zoom into 100% super quick. Then all you got to do, use your left and right bracket keys to choose a spot removal brush that's about the same size as your spots, maybe a little bit bigger. If you just click on it, then Lightroom does an awesome job most of the time of grabbing some nice texture from the surrounding area to get rid of those spots. Now, if it ever does a really weird job, like if it pulls texture from the wrong spot, you can just grab the source point and drag it to where you want it to be. So it gives you the ability to control exactly where you pull that source material from. Now I got a lot of spots in this image, so I'm gonna just fast forward through this part and crank those out. Okay, now here is my last spot. So, once that guy is gone, badoosh, there we go. Now we've done a great job. Our image is nice and clean. So let me go ahead and hit done. Hit the space bar, that'll zoom me all the way back out. Now we can see, yeah, we are spot loose and fancy free. Sweet. So we're almost done with the edit here. Uh, I noticed one or two things when I was zoomed into 100%. One, I wouldn't mind if there was a little more detail here in these mountains. They're just a tiny bit soft, partly because I was shooting at f22 and partly because the scene is so deep, maybe they're a little touch out of focus. So if we jump over to our detail tab, we can actually try to sharpen that up a little bit. So I'm just going to pull up my sharpening, maybe pull up my radius a little bit too, and let's take a look if that brought out more of the details. Oh yeah, absolutely. That just really firmed up those edges a little bit, but it also brought out some noise here in the image. So uh, this is all luminance noise. So I'm just gonna just drag that luminance slider up a little bit and Lightroom should do a pretty good job of smoothing that back out. Cool. Maybe a little moss. There we go. Now that's looking really good. Finally, last thing that I wanna do, this is how I polish off a lot of my images. As I jump down here to my effects tab and I just add a little bit of a vignette, not a strong one, but just a little one. It kind of wraps the edges with a kind of a dark blanket. And what that does is it helps pull your eye to the center of the frame, which is brighter than the edges. So that's it. That's the final image. Let's take a look at our before and our after to see how far we really came with a really simple application of Lightroom tools. We really, really brought out a ton of detail and drama and color and goodness in this photo. So hope you guys really enjoyed that. If you thought this video was helpful, please share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel. You can also join our newsletter for all kinds of photo tips and other photo goodies. And be sure to check out some of our other post-processing videos. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.